Welcome back. Today we're looking at this DualSense controller for the PS5. Now the problem with it is it's got stick drift. So we're going to be trying to install the Hall Effect potentiometers into this controller and hopefully it will never get stick drift again. So let's get into it. Alright, so here's the controller in all its glory. Now this did come as part of a bundle. Um, I'm not going to tell you what it came with but I'm sure you can guess because I don't want to ruin the surprise. This actually came from CEX, which is surprising to me because I would expect that they would fix their own consoles and controllers. If you don't know, CEX are the main kind of used console retailer and used game retailer in the UK, similar to GameStop, which is what you have in America. And it's in pretty nice condition. But we'll get this plugged into the gamepad tester and find out which analog stick has the problem. All right, so here we are in the gamepad tester. You can see the one on the right is absolutely perfect it snaps back to the middle all the way the one on the left isn't that bad to be honest um i think because it's come from a retail store they just simply wouldn't sell something like this i mean i do tap when i tap it tiny it does always kind of drag you see how it jumps to the very end and i'm literally just tapping that the slightest bit in any case we're going to change it out so these are the hall effect potentiometers it came in a pack of 10 um and i bought them from aliexpress it costs about £10 with shipping and tax, so it's not bad. So they're about £1 each. And this is what they look like close up. And I believe the difference is inside the potentiometers on the side here, the magnets. So I've never been inside one of these before, but we're going to give it a go. I did watch a teardown guide, but it was probably a month ago now. So I think we start by prying up under here. And just drag that along. That's that side loose. Okay, and that will just come off. Next, I think that we just lever the R1 and L1 buttons out. I actually broke my pry tool. Use the other side. RIP. And if I remember rightly, that's just four screws to get this open. Uh, but where? Aha, two on the bottom. And then we've got two under the R1 buttons, which is why we had to take them off. So they look the same to me, so I'm not concerned about mixing them up. Then we can grab a intact pry tool just pry this open and pull it apart hopefully oh almost ripped that tab off there be careful of that okay so i assume the next thing we do is take the battery out looks like we've got one screw does this just come off it's got a ribbon on it I'm not sure if that's what you're supposed to do but I just pulled it right out because it didn't have a clip on it Yep, that just pulls right out. Okay, let's take a screenshot of that. So it goes yellow, green, black, red. Yellow, green, black, red. Okay, so I've just got solder and iron and a pair of tweezers to help me out. Start on this yellow one and grab it individually. Just came straight out. Oh, we've got one ribbon up here. Looks like it's just a pull tab again. Yep. See this clip down here behind the ribbon connector? Maybe try pressing in, that in. One on the other side too. Yep. 
one on either side. There we go. And you just need to guide these out. And we should just be able to pull these off. Yep. So these are the potentiometers we're going to be replacing. I'm going to make sure I do the left one first, which when we turn over is going to be on the right hand side, because this is the faulty one. And depending on how it goes, I may also do this one. So it looks like these are all the points we need to desolder. And you should be able to see which pins we need to desolder now. Okay, so this is the left one. I've just got the board upside down. So left currently is left. Um, there's many ways of doing this now. Uh, first of all, I am going to try to do it with a solder sucker and see how I get on with that because I really want to improve my skill with the solder sucker. All right, so we're just going to go in with this one first. Going to melt it, get the solder sucker in there. Boom. That looks good. Possibly still a little bit in there, but we can come back to that. Melt this. Firm hand. Didn't quite melt that. So it was around this time I decided I was going to go through all them pins and touch them up with leaded solder. Now what this does is lower the melting temperature of the factory solder to somewhere in between leaded solder and the unleaded solder. So basically it's going to melt a lot quicker and come up a lot easier. Oh yeah, much better. Okay, so I've just got some braid and I've put some flux on it. Um, where am I? Let's come over here. So after going around all the pins with the braid, I wasn't able to get all of the solder out. There were just the slightest littlest bits. I then switched to a bigger tip and managed to get most of it out. But still, there was just the tiniest littlest of bits of solder that was holding the potentiometer down and I couldn't pull it out. So I decided to do something stupid and go in with the hot air again. Now those of you that see me use the hot air on one of these last time, you'll know that I melted all the plastic on the bottom of the analog stick and it made a horrible mess. Uh, I was able to fix that but I'm gonna try it again uh, at a lower heat and see if we can get these out. This shouldn't take as long because we replaced it with leaded solder already, so it should belt quicker. And we're off. All right, let's take a look at this. And it doesn't look melted, but we don't know until we turn it over to the other side. Come on, I think that looks good. We're not melted, thank God. What I'm going to do now is to give this a very quick clean with some IPA. Okay, that's looking a lot better. It's not perfect. But we'll get this back under the mic. In fact, we'll take this one off first and then we'll install the new one. You can probably see we've got most of it out. Um, I didn't have much luck with the braid on the other side, so I'm just going to do what we've done last time and go in with the hot air. Um, let's just quickly look at the other side, because most of the holes look clear. Yeah, so that hot air worked really well, as you can see. Um, so hopefully we'll get the same result on this side. Okay, we're set up ready for the hot air, so we're going to do exactly the same as last time. So as far as the new potential motors go, they can only actually fit in one way, so there's no like left or right. So you should just be able to pop it in and push it all the way down. And there you can see everything's poking out nice. And just make sure that they're flush to the board like that. So we don't need the microscope for this part. Um, we shouldn't need too much flux either, just a dab, because there is there should be flux inside. If you're using rosin core solder, there's actually flux inside.
we can give it a nice clean up with some IPA again, and then we can inspect it under the microscope. Before we put this all back together, you actually need to calibrate these potentiometers um, while the while you've got access to them. So here we are under the microscope. Doesn't look too bad. Um, yep, that's the right analog stick, and that's the left one. Okay, so before we put it back together, we need to plug the battery in and obviously be careful because there's going to be a live voltage going through here. Um, so we need to plug the back battery in and perform sacrilege and plug in an Xbox cable. And the reason we do this is we need to take these back off. And we need to calibrate. We need to calibrate these. So the way we do that is you go to the gamepad tester. So as you can see, the one on the right is perfectly center, but the one on the left is not. It's the potentiometer is swinging to the left and it's swinging up. So what you need is a small kind of pin. So I've got these tweezers, but you can also use something like a, a SIM card extractor or like a bobby pin, a sewing pin. So this bottom potentiometer is for the left and the right, and this side potentiometer is for up and down. So first of all, we want to get this centered left to right. So all we need to do is, got these two holes, so you can use either one. So just try and pick one and stick with it if you can. And you want to pull it, pull the joystick in the opposite direction. So we can see that the joystick currently is centered too far to the left. So we want to pull the joystick all the way to the right and put this pin in and just let the joystick slip back a tiny bit. And if we come off, there you go, you can see we've almost got it. So all we're doing is moving the magnet inside. So you're holding the magnet in place while this pulls back. And we really only want to go a tiny bit on this last one. So just that, a tiny bit more. Tiny bit more. Tiny bit more. And again, opposite direction. And again, so we've gone too far there. So now you can see we've gone to the right. So now we need to pull the joystick to the left and do the same thing. And we've gone too far again. So this can get tedious. So now we're slightly too far to the right. So we want to pull the joystick to the left. And that is pretty much centered. I'm happy with that. Now I just need to bring it down. So we're going to do the exact same thing, but on the side. Obviously you need the battery plugged in to do this. So we need to come down. So we want to pull it in the opposite direction. So you want to pull the joystick all the way down, put in whatever you're using and just pull it up slightly and then pull it out. So we've gone too far. So we're gonna pull it all the way up this time. Pull it down slightly. Same again. Same again. Now we've gone too far, so we need to pull it down. And that's all you have to do. It is pretty tricky, but you will get used to it. There we have it. Not a bad little fix today. Hopefully this thing will never have stick drift again. I'm sure you all know what's coming next. I'm super nervous and I'm super excited. I've never owned a PS5. I've never worked on a PS5. So look forward to that. So please consider subscribing if you enjoyed today's video. Also leave a comment on how you think I did today. I'm very new to repairs. I'm still learning every single day. Almost every video now I'm getting tips in the comments and it helps me so much. I really wouldn't have been able to fix half the stuff that I've fixed so far if it wasn't for you guys keeping me right. So thank you for that.